In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Google Ads for Amazon, as well as how to drive traffic to your Amazon listing using Google Ads and ultimately rank, uh, generate more profit every single month, and to do all of this very, very easily and simply using Google search ads, especially if you're already using Amazon PPC advertising, then this will be very easy for you. And even if you don't, um, I'm going to walk you through literally step by step and hopefully provide some gold nuggets that you may not have been able to find out on your own. So let's go ahead and get into it. So why am I talking about Google ads or, or why is there a lot of talk in the Amazon FBA community, at least recently about Google advertising, okay? And Google ads for Amazon. So the thing is with Amazon and utilizing Amazon PPC, why are people on Amazon, right? Generally, they're there to buy, okay? Why are people on Google? As you can see here by the blue, right? We have all different kinds of people um, on Google, right? Looking for information, product, or information, information, products, services, physical products, all different kinds of things, right? Uh, not just buyers, but everyone else. So out of all those people, then there's a percentage of people who are uh, there, they're on Google to buy. And again, this is not to scale, it'd probably be much smaller, uh, but there's a percentage of people there to buy. And out of that, there are a, a percentage of people who on Google right now, at this very moment that we speak, that want to buy your product and have no idea that it exists. And I'm gonna show you how to profitably, very important word, reach them and ultimately drive traffic uh, and, and help your Amazon listing rank better. Okay. So, um, so that's kind of the premise. That's why we're talking about Google ads. Cause there's plenty of, it's a huge platform, plenty of people who want to buy your product. So let's go out and find them and we're going to find them and target them using Google search ads. Okay. What is a Google search ad? If you're not familiar, um, here's an example. So I type in the term stainless steel taco holder and here's what appears. Okay. So these are two Google search ads. Uh, and you price it, you have guaranteed you see them before. If you use Google, they appear above the search results. Uh, the organic search results they have a little um ad here you know a little ad logo here on the left hand side as you can see one actually directs specifically to amazon uh that could be amazon's own um listing but uh but I, it may very well have been created by a seller so i'm going to show you how to do exactly this um regardless what your product is okay we have another ad here that doesn't go to amazon it goes to web restaurant um but this is just what a google search ad is am i actually going to show you how to make better ones okay so What's the goal, right? Rank and profit, right? That's the ultimate, uh, ultimate goal here. So I can't show you guys ex uh, examples of my specific Amazon products. I mean, I technically could, but um, there's some issues there uh, that, and I talk about that in other videos actually, or I'll create, be creating a video about that. So I'm going to give you guys an example, not to promote it, uh, but I have a, an Amazon course on Udemy. Okay. So Udemy is basically like, uh, it's like the Amazon of information products. People go to Udemy to buy uh, really inexpensive courses, right? So very, very similar to Amazon. So I've set up a account, a Google ad account or Google ad, um, Google ads for all of my Amazon products. I've also done the same for my information products, right? I have an $11 Amazon course. Um, and I set up an ad for that course, Google ads. Okay. So here's the results. It, and this is within less than two weeks as of the making of this video. It's, it's been less than two weeks. Uh, I've, I've received 500 impressions out of those 500 impressions, 24 clicks. Um, which has cost me a total of $5 and 27 cents. As you can see, 22 cents per click. So what's the result? I've spent $5 and 27 cents and I have made $22 in profit at, and actually at least I may, I will be making more profit than that. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more detail how I know that and why, and why I'm able to track, but this took me an hour to set up. And I've already made $15 in profit within less than two weeks. And I can really scale up this ad. I, I really have greater expectations for the future. Um, but it's very, very easy to set up very, uh, not a lot of time. And it's not a lot of time to maintain either. Cause that's another question I'm sure you have. I'm gonna cover everything, but just quickly want to show you some real results. Okay. So this is, uh, my real, um, a real campaign that I've set up real results. And I'm also going to show you, uh, this, I, I just went ahead. I created a new campaign for one of my newer courses about many chat again, not trying to promote it, just using it as an example. And that's the example I'm going to be using. Okay. So step one, you need to set up a Google ads account, very easy to do and free to do. So just go type in Google ads account. You'll get to this page, uh, click start now. And one of the benefits of signing up for Google ads that a lot of people don't know about. So I signed up for an account like for this advertising right here. Uh, they sent me in uh, via email, a coupon code for, so when I spend $25 there, they give me $100 in advertising credit. So literally after I spend $25, which won't be long, I get a hundred dollars free advertising. So I could literally just crank up the bid and you know, it, so anyway, I could do a lot with that, but it's free advertising. So if you're not utilizing this, I do not understand why, uh, especially now that you know about it. So, but I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> step two. So step one, uh, set up your account. Step two is you're going to create your campaign. So go on to the left-hand side, click on 
uh, campaigns click on new campaign and this may look a little bit different if you have a brand new account um, but just go to the campaign section create new campaign really straightforward uh, step number three you want to select optimize for website traffic right we have sales leads uh, product consideration apps all of that what I'd recommend personally and what I use is website traffic okay because we're trying to send again external traffic to Amazon and again I, there's some questions I'm sure you have I promise you I'm going to cover them and by the way if there's something that you expected out of this or, or you, you have questions about be sure to comment below I'll get back to you as soon as I can we also have a Facebook group as well so just throwing that out there step number four um, once you kind of uh, select website traffic select search okay there's a few different options you have you can uh, you can have your ad show up in Google search positions Google display a really great example of this is helium 10 I I am still being bombarded which is totally fine but I'm being bombarded with um helium 10 Google display ads these are kind of like little you see these on different websites and blogs and stuff you'll see these little like horizontal or vertical rectangle like images or little ads on the side of different websites so if you ever go to go to helium 10 and then you'll see these uh, re, they're re, called retargeting ads uh, they're using Google display ads for that so that's the best example that I can give for that Google shopping ads very very powerful specifically for products uh, a little bit more work and uh, it, it's not as easy to set up which is why I'm not covering it in this video but I will in the future um, when I when, once I set some up for myself and then lastly um, go, uh, you know YouTube ads or Google video ads so all really great options they can be used at any part of your funnel uh, but right now we're gonna really focus on Google search ads and I'll talk about why in a second very easy okay so select the ad option we need to name our campaign in this case like I said I'm, I'm creating this campaign for my main chat uh, uh, course on Udemy so it's gonna be my manage at for Amazon course that's just my campaign name uh, and then also right here I would recommend turning off display network okay so you see search network and then display network um, you can leave you can um, unclick both okay so basically you have a few options right and it's, it's kind of similar with with Amazon right when you're advertising on Amazon you can you know when you're when you're bidding on keywords you think oh if I bid on these keywords I'm going to just show up for the search results well no you're also showing up on product pages if you have no idea, idea what I'm talking about it doesn't matter for Google right if you uh, unclick search network and unclick display network then you're only as far as I know you can correct me if I'm wrong but I'm pretty confident on this you only show up for the Google search results so only on Google um, I like to include search network to kind of broaden uh, broaden my my horizons a little bit and get some more opportunity especially with being such a low bid that's what I personally like to do but you can choose to click it or unclick it so what a search network is right are kind of other websites that act kind of like search engines okay so it's not Google but it's Google's um, um, network or kind of their partners okay so it's not Google specifically but you can also have your ads show up uh, there as well or be eligible to show up there as well I like to leave it click and I, I've actually gotten better results by doing that uh, from what I can see so far but again and you can always test right a B test and, and test what works best for you just kind of my recommendation but for for this example I am not gonna I don't want to be eligible to show up for the display network okay um, but just just the, uh, the just the uh, search network but again it's all up to you so that's just my personal preference step number six uh, geo targeting if you're selling an Amazon US very simple United States if you're selling via FBM right and you want to limit your you can limit by certain regions states um, so you can include and exclude so for example I could choose uh, to target only the United States and then exclude Hawaii and Alaska uh, to make sure my ads do not show up for the US and not Alaska and Hawaii very very straightforward very logical um, if you're selling in the UK obviously right it, it just think about where your customers are don't just select all countries and territories for my course uh, and that's another thing that's beautiful about uh, digital products and information products which I'm going to be making more videos about that in the future I think that's a I have a lot of theories on that it's very very powerful if done correctly not you know not making courses and scamming people because obviously I'm, I'm completely against that uh, but anyway I can have an international reach so you can see here Argentina Australia Austria Belgium Brazil etc I have a huge list of countries that I'm targeting for my digital product for my Amazon products it's just the United States okay for language very straightforward you know likely going to be English uh, again here's an opportunity for you to maybe differentiate so maybe your product you found based on your research appeals to a lot of uh, uh, Hispanics and you know uh, so maybe you want to create a campaign in Spanish right and you have to think if this makes sense it really depends on your product um, but this could help you differentiate right so that's just something to keep in mind especially if you're in the United States and just think about this as well with other countries and some of your surrounding countries uh, and other languages as well could be an opportunity but for right now keep it simple uh, we'll uh, select English since that's so widely spoken in the United States uh, 
next step step number eight very important your bid and your budget so i like to bid between or sorry i like to budget between 10 to 20 dollars per day now as you could see right my ad was running for two weeks and has less than six dollars spent um so far but that'll change in the future uh that was even with a 20 dollars daily budget so just because you set your your budget to 20 or 10 dollars does not mean you will reach that it means that's the maximum it can reach okay so again that's what i like to that's the kind of uh, range that i like to bid in and then what do you want to focus on you'll select clicks i like to set a maximum definitely very important set a maximum cost per click very very important in my opinion um you want to set this to in my opinion if you're selling amazon products knowing a lot of private label sellers specifically on amazon somewhere in the range of 10 to 30 cents i'd recommend bidding lower at somewhere around 10 cents and again there's no 100 right answer i'm sure i'll get people commenting like oh you can't just say that but you'll get good i can you know there's a good chance you'll get great results with it so just i would recommend personally and what i do with my own products start lower at 10 cents if you're not getting as many impressions or clicks consider uh i'm increasing it so but in general for both my and again it's so similar guys it's like the, the parallels are so similar for my information products on udemy and my physical products on amazon um profit is relatively similar so um so yeah i i really um bid within the 10 to 30 cent per click range okay so that's just what i do personally and want to share that with you and it's worked great so far so uh next site link extensions okay this is the next option so what are site link extensions you can see them here they're in kind of the white uh air the little white box here the 100 percent money back guarantee save hours of time six free flows etc okay site link extensions basically uh allow your ad to kind of gain more visibility it kind of gives more content to your ad uh gives more reasons for people to click so it can improve your click-through rate your conversion rate um very easy to set up and then uh a, but still a lot of people like if we go back to the taco holder example they did not do this very easy to do and it can literally help get you significantly better results so uh to do that just you'll go here and create some site like extensions um you know what should they be or what how do i do that you know what are site like extensions um basically or how i kind of use them and again i don't know if i preface this i'm not a technical quote-unquote google ads expert i'm an e-commerce seller mainly amazon right now but i'm expanding more um who is really trying to figure out the best ways to drive traffic to rank to profit using all different kinds of methods and really building out my my skill set um so so i just want to preface that i don't know if i said that already but uh so what i use site links for is i want to call out specific benefits and features that address specific pain points for my customers basically like just think about your audience why why like why would they click on your ad like why should they right give them a reason to so for example for you know 30 day money back guarantee two day shipping um what are some different maybe materials or design elements or or utility like what sets you apart from other sellers what's the benefit that your product like how does it get them from point a to point b how does it make take them from being unhappy to being happy just those kind of questions that's what i like to include so some different benefits and features okay that i really want to call out um so so yeah that's that's why i'd recommend so that's site link extensions you can also do what's called call out extensions which i would also recommend as you can see here there's the 100 percent money back guarantee in this case 94 percent off of my 200 dollars uh, course um because i want to keep it very very inexpensive and affordable so these are call out extensions you can do both i would recommend doing both why not and you can either choose right maybe for your site link extensions you have um um you know certain information benefits and features and for your call out extensions you have different benefits and features or they could be the same um you know it's really up to you and it, you only know by testing but again similar kind of idea think about the benefits and features what makes you what makes your product different what problem is it solving how can you just entice someone get someone so excited to click on your ad right that kind of thought not just oh let me be technical and let me read this article and just try to abide by the rules just try to just i always find you know i try to use common sense uh think like my customer and what would they want okay so call it extensions and lastly this is an option for you and remember how i said i i, I made 22 dollars in profit from five dollars and 27 cents spent on google ads so far how did i track that how do i know that well i used a promo extension okay this is the last extension i promise um so the promo extension if you go down you can cl uh, click create create new extension and then uh the plus sign promotion extension so basically with this you can offer a percent off of your advertising so this is going to improve your click-through rate and maybe even more importantly this can help you track your results because that's one of the difficulties of driving external traffic to amazon is as of right now and this could change in the future with um attribution data and things like that uh but or amazon attribution i should say uh it's difficult to track your results uh one way you can do that okay here's a little hack 
create a coupon code, right? This could be just like a 10% off or 15% off coupon code in Seller Central that specifically, it's only used, only, only used for your Google ads. And maybe if you really wanna narrow it down for a specific ad within your Google ads campaign, I'll talk about that in a second, but just one specifically for Google ads, you create that and then you can see, okay, we spent $100 on ads, um, you know, this many people click, blah, 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 okay, great. What are our results, right? We spent $100, how many sales did we make directly from the advertising? And I can, it won't, because, and so, so there's, you know, that's a way to kind of help you track with that being said, okay, with that being said, you, some people will click on your ad, they won't really, they'll just kind of be searching and clicking and buying, uh, they'll click on your ad, maybe they won't use your coupon code right away, uh, but they'll go, maybe they'll, they'll start to purchase, maybe they'll just look at your product and kind of forget about it, and then later, Amazon, and this is one of the benefits of why drive traffic, and I'll talk about this in a second, drive traffic specifically to Amazon versus a landing page, is because when you drive traffic to Amazon, um, Amazon can actually, you know, retarget those customers. So they can do, use uh, Facebook ad retargeting, Google ad retargeting as well. Uh, and you can ultimately get a sale even without them using the coupon code. So just something to keep in mind. And that's why earlier I said I've made at least uh, $15, well, $15, $17 in, $16, $17 in profit from my Google ad so far at least. Because I know that, number one, this is helping my, my, my for Udemy specifically, this is helping uh, Google ads are helping my Udemy course rank. Uh, they're helping my, you know, Amazon products rank, which is getting more organic results, uh, getting more sales that way. Uh, then also, you know, they could be retargeted or follow up later and not use the coupon code, but this could be a good starting point. So just something to keep in mind. Um, I just, you know, I'm trying to be as in depth as possible. I hope I'm not going too overboard. Uh, and with filling out the uh, promotion extension, excuse me, um, for the occasion, they have certain, there's specific occasions you can select, for example, Black Friday, Thanksgiving, July 4th, Labor Day, I don't know, all those kind of things. Uh, I select none, language, English. Uh, for my promotion type, in this case, 94% off. In your case, it could be 10% off, 15% off. Um, the item, just your, pro this could be your product name. So ex for example, it'll, it'll basically say, you know, 15% off and then item name. So, so for your case, you might want the item name like, you know, baby diaper bag, baby diaper caddy, I guess. So 15% off baby diaper bag, okay? So really simple. And then lastly, for the final URL, well, second to last, if you look at the very bottom, you see promotion details. So make sure that this is where you're gonna, you're, you create your promotion, your promo code in, um, in Amazon Seller Central. Take that promo code and you're gonna place it here, okay? So that's, so that's how people know to copy and paste or take that from your ad um, and then use it later, okay? So you wanna make sure you include that. Um, and then lastly is your URL. So you see the final URL, okay? So later when you create your actual ads, which will be very soon, I promise, you're gonna need to use a URL. So what URL should you be using? Again, I recommend using a two-step URL and there's a tool called Helium 10 Gems. So Helium 10 Gems, you'll get to a page like this. It's completely free. You don't need a Helium 10 account. And I would recommend using the two-step via brand. So far, according to uh, Bradley Sutton, this is the most effective um, the most effective URL for ranking as of right now, based on their research, I've used this and found really great results. So basically, right. When people click on your Google ads and then ultimately buy, you're going to get some ranking benefit using this URL. And if you're not familiar with two-step URLs, you can just brush up on it. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail. Basically it's a URL. It's going to help you rank for a specific keyword. So here's another way to track your, so number one way to track your uh, results with Google ads for Amazon is to create a coupon code and then use that coupon code in the Google ad. Number two is to find a keyword on Amazon. So if you're brand new, look at a, one of your top search keywords. You can use Helium 10 or Seller Tools or the two tools I like for um, Amazon keyword research. Look at your, look at, uh, you know, where are your, what is the top search keywords that your competitors are organically ranking? If you see a keyword that's like, oh, this, relate, this could relate to my product, but maybe you see none of your competitors, maybe be wary of that because if you try to rank for that keyword you may not be able to organically rank because for whatever reason with with without you know outside of our human understanding when people search for this keyword on amazon they're not buying our product so try to find that balance of top search keywords and then uh, uh that that and also make sure that, that keyword you're able to organically rank for if you're already selling on amazon what i've done with my products with great success is i try to find a high um high search keyword that i was ranking on but i'm like at the bottom of page one so for example, there's one keyword that I'm ranking for or that I'm ranking for right now. And I'm already seeing an increase in ranking for my Google ads already, which is awesome. So I found a, a keyword. I was on spot like 28. Okay. And I don't know what spot I'm on, I'm on now, but basically if you take that keyword, you plug it in here to the two-step via brand URL, 
and you start using that in your Google ads and you're spending enough on your Google ads after a month, two months or whatever, you should be able to start to see, right? Are we're spending money on Google? Are we increasing in rank for that keyword, right? And organically increasing in rank. If the answer is yes, well, you know, you don't know the exact results, but you can see that your Google ads are getting results because you're increasing in rank. So there's a two ways to track your results as of right now. Um, hope that's helpful. And then uh, number two that I really quickly want to point out, a lot of people are like, well, Sumner, why wouldn't you send people, why are you sending them directly to Amazon? Doesn't that hurt my conversion rate? Things like that. If you have, and I'm going to show you this in a second. It, everything makes more sense at the end. I wish I could spill it all right now, but I have to take it step by step. You're going to be targeting very specific keywords uh, that have bought, purchase intent. So you're not targeting a bunch of random people that have a bunch of random desires and will be clicking. So not that everyone's going to buy, but you're much more likely that people are clicking on an ad, a Google ad, um, that's clearly talks about what your product is, all that. Um, they're more likely to buy than just the average person. So I have no problem sending it directly to my Amazon listing. Plus when I send it directly to Amazon, again, Amazon can retarget those customers. Um, and honestly, I've noticed this personally. I can't, I won't say this with hundred percent confidence with every product, but I've noticed with my products, I don't even get sales. So I use a two-step URL with Google ads. I don't even get sales. I just get clicks. And that alone helps me rank for that specific keyword. It's very interesting. It's something that I've noticed personally. Um, comment below if you've noticed this or, or have any more insight on this. I, I thought that was very interesting. Um, but that's why I send traffic directly to Amazon and it's a lot easier, right? You don't need to create a landing page. Um, and like I said before, last thing is remember there's, there's all these different types of people on Google. Then there's the people who want to buy. And then there's that small group of people that want to buy your product. Again, we're only targeting them. If I was talking about Facebook ads or Pinterest ads or any kind of other, or a lot of other kinds of, uh, forms of advertising or Instagram ads or whatever, I wouldn't send that traffic directly to, uh, to Amazon because I want to make sure I filter out, uh, um, you know, the buyers from the non-buyers. Okay. Because I'm targeting people that I have no idea if they want to buy or not. I just know that they're in my target market where with Google, what I'm going to show you in a second is we're only going to target people who want to buy or, or at least highly likely to buy. Okay. So that's why I do this. I know there's some debate over this, but, um, I've, again, I found great results with this. So, so why wouldn't I share it? So, um, if you agree, disagree, comment below and like the video and subscribe. <laughs> okay. Step number 12 ad groups. So just like with Amazon PPC, if you're already familiar, you have the campaign level ad group level, and then the ad level, the actual ads. Okay. Same thing with Facebook, same thing with Google ads. So we have the campaign. Now we're in the ad group level. Okay. Cause we already created the campaign. So, or at least that level, I guess I could say. So first you're going to name your camp or your ad group. What I like to do, okay, because you have multiple ad groups. What I like to do is if I have variate, if my product has variations, for example, pink, blue, orange, green, then I want to keep those each separate keywords specifically relating to those separate variations, right? And that's just one example. But so, so maybe I would have, in this case, you know, I don't know, if I had different main chat courses, then I would have different, you know, probably. But, but anyway, that doesn't make sense in this case, but that's just for Amazon specifically. Number two is a specific keyword. So that's what I use with many chat. For example, um, I'm actually going to scroll right here. As you can see here, these are my main chat course keywords. Okay. So I have uh, one ad group for, for any, for, um, keywords that have the term course in them. I have another ad group for the word training, etc. So for example, in this group, in this ad group, I create an ad group for main chat for Amazon seller course, main chat for Amazon FBA course, main chat, Amazon review course, main chat for Amazon course, right? It all has the term course in the keyword for my, so that's ad group number one. Ad group number two is main chat for Amazon sellers training, main chat for Amazon FBA training, main chat, Amazon review training, et cetera, et cetera. Right. You see what I'm saying? So, um, that's what I like to do. If that kind of overwhelms you, you're like, oh my gosh, how do I do that? You can just start with one ad group, but I would, re I, I would recommend, um, it's really easy to do creating different ad groups based on, um, um, keyword relevance and then different ad, and then one ad or well, really ultimately two ads, uh, to AB test, but one ad, you know, for each ad group. Okay. It'll make more sense as we go on. So, so you name your ad group, you can get started with one, you you, and now you need to fill it with keywords. Um, Sumner, how do I find keywords and how do I find them for free? And like you said, I only want to target people that want to buy my product. How do I do that? Really simple guys. But first, once you find, I'm going to show you how to, some sources for keyword research. Uh, once you find keywords with buyer intent, what I recommend doing, in, you're going to add them here to this section, as you see right here on the screen, just like this. Um, I recommend entering them as phrase match. What does that mean? What that means is, right, when somebody types in uh, a phrase that contains these exact keywords in this exact sequence, your ad is eligible to show up. Okay. So 
when someone types into Google, you can try this for, well, don't try this because I don't want you wasting all my clicks. <laughs> but um, Manny Chat for Amazon Sellers course, if you, uh, my ad, when someone types in that into Google, my ad is eligible to show up. Now, there, if, if there are a bunch of different companies and people bidding on that keyword, right, I might not be the first one to show up, but I'm, my ad is eligible to show up, okay? Um, so Manny Chat for Amazon Sellers course also, um, right now, you know, I'm eligible to show up for something like, um, um, you know, two hour main chat for Amazon sellers course. If someone typed in two hour main chat for Amazon sellers course, I'm also eligible to show up unless I add two hour or hour as a negative keyword, which I'll talk about in a second. Okay. So, so this is the best way because when you're, it, it gives you a little bit more room and kind of helps you find some more longer tail keywords. Generally, the longer a keyword is, right, the longer tail a keyword is, the less competitive it is. So it's easier to, to rank organically using SEO. It's easier generally, he has a lower cost per click. It's easier to bid on um, uh, for that keyword than, than a shorter keyword in general. So that's, it's, so phrase match, in my opinion, is better than exact match because it helps you find even more keywords uh, to, that are relevant uh, that you might've missed out on, okay? So, so that's what I'd recommend uh, when you get to that stage. And to do that, to set them as phrase match, you just put quotation marks at the beginning and the end. So for example, as you can see here, quotation, main chat for Amazon reviews, course, and quotation. Okay, that's how you set it to phrase match. And if you look at the very bottom of the screen, uh, match type helps you control which searches can trigger your ads. You know, broad match, phrase match, exact match. It, it shows you right there. So very, very simple. Again, if you have questions, comment below. Again, there's a lot of other great videos. Uh, I'm not a Google ads expert. Okay, so, uh, so like I promised, keyword research. Summer, how do we find keywords? How do we find them for free? There's a ton, there are so many data sources out there, guys, so many. So here's some, if you're already running Amazon PPC, look at your keywords that you're converting well for uh, and that you're, you're um, making sales on profitably, okay? So if you're already running PPC, that's a great source of data. Again, uh, don't just blindly copy and paste. Is oh, it's profitable on Amazon, so therefore it'll be, it'll be profitable on Google. Make sure you're looking for keywords that specifically relate to your product. For example, let's say you're selling a baby product and for whatever reason, this would be awesome. If you, uh, you're bidding, you're, you know, you're running ads on Amazon for, for the term baby product and you're getting sales. Well, on Google ads, you could try that, but I mean, baby products is so broad. So if you're trying to target the term baby products, people are looking for all different kinds of things. Um, and it, it, it's a little bit too broad. So you want to make it narrow. Like just look at the keyword and just think, does this keyword relate to my product and my product only? If the answer is yes. I would recommend uh, consider using that. If the answer is no, it, it applies to my product and a bunch of other products, then maybe don't start off there. You can add it in later and test it, um, but I recommend not. So Amazon PPC, great source of free data if you're already running. Google Keyword Planner. If you have a Google account, you, you have free access to this. Um, so you can basically just go to your Google account, type in um, uh, Keyword Planner in the search bar and you'll find it. Uh, you type in a keyword and Google's gonna basically show you other similar keywords, okay? It shows you how competitive they are, how many monthly searches, et cetera. But we just wanna kind of harvest as many uh, potential keywords as possible at this point. Another great tool is Ubersuggest by Neil Patel. Just type in Ubersuggest. Um, it's free to use. Again, these all these first four options are free. There's a tool called Seller SEO. I haven't personally used it yet, but um, but I know that they this is used specifically for Google Ads and Amazon together. So so that could be another tool, free tool to consider. And lastly, you know, Merchant Words, KeywordTool.io, a lot of other paid tools you can use as well. So a lot of ways. And again, what you're trying to find, find keywords that specifically relate to your product and only your product. Okay. Uh, and, and I'll talk more about that in a second. So um, so yeah. So those are the keywords you want to find, amass a big list, uh, include those into your ad group. And then finally we get to the actual ad creation. We're almost there guys. I promise the ad level. Okay. So what is, what does that mean? So we already did all the targeting, right? The keyword targeting, the geo targeting, all that kind of stuff and the bidding, all that. Now we need to, what are, uh, cu potential customers, future customers, uh, Google visitors, what are they going to see when they see our ad? Like, what is it going to look like? Okay. That's what we're doing now. So, there's two main parts at this point. There's also your site link extensions, your call out extensions, your promo extensions. Remember all those extensions we created? That's also gonna be part of your ad. But here, the last and kind of the bulk of your ad is gonna be your headline and your description, okay? And I have the two red arrows here, uh, headline and description, okay? For your headline, again, you don't have a lot of characters, right? So uh, if you haven't already, I would highly recommend just Googling and learning a little bit more about copywriting. Copywriting. If you're ever planning on being an e-commerce or online or digital entrepreneur or marketer, copywriting is, I found it so like, 
when I'm creating ads on, on, you know, writing my listing, creating ads, writing blog posts, making, um, Instagram posts, anything copywriting comes in such like, it's so powerful. Uh, it's such an important skill. I uh, highly recommend learning more about it. Uh, and it's going to really help you, but here's just some copywriting tips that I do. Uh, and I've had success with, and that I've learned benefits based. Okay. So in your headline, what are some like, like try to think of what are the most powerful, impactful and true. You don't want to be dishonest cause it's not going to help you. But what are some of the most powerful things that you can include in your headline that are going to grab people's attention and get them to click? Okay. So in my case, right for my, for my, um, Amazon FBA course on Udemy, most, I, I know my audience pretty well. I've done a lot of research and you need to make sure you do research on your audience. That's the number one, before you do any of this research, your audience, know them psychographically, demographically, have a very, very clear understanding of who is buying your product, not just the keywords, who is buying your product. Okay. With Amazon sellers, or people, sorry, people who are new to Amazon, maybe non Amazon sellers, people who are interested, they're very accustomed to seeing courses, Amazon FBA courses for $997 all the way up to like $5,000. Okay. So I know my audience and I know the keywords I'm bidding on. So when someone types in Amazon FBA course and they see my ad that says $11 Amazon FBA course, that's going to pique their interest. Cause they're like, I was planning on spending like $500 to $5,000 on a course 11. Hmm. This is interesting. So I know that's going to spark their interest. And then what else I include is, you know, cause then I know the next thing they're going to think is, okay, $11 sounds great, but it, I don't believe it. It's too good to be true. So I back it up and say, you know, 17 and a half hours of content, um, 4.6 out of five star rating, uh, you know, um, uh, 30 day money back guarantee, things like that. I'm currently a B testing, but just, I mean, if you're so, so I, and I say that because if you're an Amazon seller, that may sound very, or someone who's interested in selling on Amazon, you, that may sound very appealing to you or very powerful to you. At least it is in my opinion. I know it would be if I was just starting off. So, um, so that's just kind of the way to think about it is who's your customer. Who's your audience? What is the benefit? Like what is ultimate, what is this ultimately going to do for them? Um, so an ex another example could be, you know, um, in your case, especially if you're using a coupon 15% off and then blank keyword. So for example, 15% off uh, baby diaper caddy. Okay. Or baby, baby diaper bag. That's if someone types in baby diaper bag and they see an ad that says 15% off baby diaper bag, that's going to capture their attention. Right? Um, so, so that's just another technique that I, uh, one way that I like to start and then some other, you know, just think about some other benefits, some other uh, great things. So what are some of your differentiators? What are, what are your benefits? Right? Um, some different things just in general, whether you want to use this in the headline or the description, which we'll talk about in just a second, you know, two day shipping, 30 day money back guarantee. If you have some kind of like warranty, um, you know, what's the benefit, right? Uh, maybe it's like, I don't know what it would be for. I can't think off the top of my head for baby diaper bag. Cause I'm just not in that niche. Um, but how is it going to solve a problem for them? Right? What is the problem they're trying to solve with this product? Maybe include that in your headline. Okay. And what's great is this is, you can just create one ad. You can create two in the end later on, you can create two ads and see which one performs better. Okay. And I definitely recommend doing that. That's called AB testing, right? So you can go ahead and create this one ad to the best of your ability. And maybe you're like, ah, oh, but what if this, you know, what if I said it like this or what, what if this worked better, create two ads and then see which one performs better. Okay. So, um, so that's for the headline. And then last tip, I know this is a lot guys, but I, I hope this is valuable. Um, use. So as you can see, I have it's, it, the, the, the top arrows pointing at something very bizarre. So it says, you know, bracket keyword dot, dot $11 main chat for Amazon course and bracket. So here's just a little tip or a little hack. And, and, and something to keep in mind when you're writing your headline for your Google ads, try to, uh, include, so you know what keywords they're typing in, right? And that's why I say create different ad groups because you got, you know, different, so ad groups are, are separated by different uh, keyword relevancy. So you have one ad group for one type of keyword, another ad group for another keyword, right? People are typing in different things for each ad group. Then you can create an ad. So, you know, I know in this case, people are typing in main chat for Amazon course. So you want to make sure that you have that word or very similar phrase in your um, headline. Okay. Cause I believe, uh, uh, Google will bolt. So if, when it matches, so when someone types in, you know, Amazon FBA course, and then I have Amazon FBA course in my headline, Google is going to bold that text in my ad, um, which is going to help it stand out more. And just think about it. If someone types in Amazon FBA course, and I had the term, um, somewhere in my title says Amazon FBA course, it's, you know, it's going to be relevant to them, right? If, it, if, if you don't include the keyword, it's going to be less relevant or at least a very similar keyword. So here's a cool little trick that you can do going back to what I was talking about. When you, you, so type in, you know, use the bracket sign like you see here. When you do that, what happens is, and I'm going to try to explain this as efficiently as possible. 
um, basically Google will take whatever their ser the, the uh, user's search query is and replace it with whatever you have. So for example, let's say someone types in, maybe it's, it's, it's a Manny chat for Am Let's say it's like Manny chat for FBA course. That's what they type in. Okay. Because I have um, the brackets here, because I've set it up this way, what what could happen is instead of it saying eleven dollar uh, main chat for Amazon course, it could say and I could set it up differently to where it could say you know eleven uh, eleven dollar um, main chat for FBA course instead, right? So if I put eleven dollars first and then the keyword like within the bracket, um, it could be eleven dollar you know uh, main chat for F FBA course. But then let's also say that their search query is really long. Maybe it's like main chat for Amazon sellers FBA course, like really really long. And it's too long to fit. Then in that case, that's when main chat for Amazon course, that's going to be the default. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but basically if the, if the term is short, if you set up the brackets, like I have here, if the term search term is short enough, um, Google can replace that with your, uh, with your, uh, default, uh, which makes the ad more relevant, makes it stand out more and it increases the likelihood of them clicking. Um, and if it's too long, then they'll just revert back to what you already have. So in this case, $11 main chat for Amazon FBA course. The one thing I need to change here is I need to put the $11 instead of, I have it here within, I need to put it outside here, $11 and then here. So I think I already changed that, but I was just taking screenshots as, as I was going along. But um, yeah, so if that's confusing, let me know. Uh, I may have overcomplicated it. But that's the headline. Again, this is very, very important. So definitely want to take the time to do this. Next, the description. Uh, there's two seconds of the description. Here's what I like to do personally. What I've kind of learned based on some of my research. So you have kind of two lines that you, you have access to for the first line. I like to be very, uh, really highlight some benefits and features. Again, again, this is all benefits based but benefits and features that really resonate with my audience. Okay. So in this case, why are people interested in Manny chat for Amazon? Why they're interested to skyrocket their, uh, their rank and reviews, and they want to save time and money, right? So skyrocket Amazon rank and reviews that that's what you're going to get. If you take this $11 course, save time and money. That's what you're going to get with this course. You're going to master main chat for Amazon. You're going to become a master, right? And that's one of the kind of the, um, it's, 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 it's a marketing appealing technique, right? Mastery freedom. These are all different types of, uh, of, of appeals, right? So I want to, so those are the benefits. That's why people are buying the course. So I want to make sure I include that. That's what I usually do in the first line. Second line call to action. Okay. Always have a call to action. What do you want people to do? Always make sure you call it out. People aren't just going to do it, right? It's very, very powerful. The subconscious power. I'm including terms like click now or shop now or things like that. So what I like to have is the call to action in the second line. So click now for 15% off. That could be your case or click now, you know, click or shop now, things like that, right? So click now for 15% off, um, limited time only. So that evokes scarcity, 100% money back guarantee. So, so from this line right here, if they click now and only now they get 15%, oh, they better act because it's going to end soon. And if they don't like it, they can get hundred percent of their money back. Very like when you think about it, at least in my view, it's very, very persuasive. I'm, I'm very likely to click this ad in my opinion. And I have got uh, good results with some of my other ads, right? So, so that's kind of what I've done. Um, but of course, always test. That's, that's the key here. Always a B test. And like I said, the, you just get started with one, just, just, you know, it's it, done is better than perfect. Getting started is better than not getting started at all. So go ahead, create your first ad. And later you can go back into your camp, go back into your ad group. It can create another ad. So you can have two ads and see which one performs better. You can switch, you know, the, the order you can, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. Okay. So, so don't worry if you don't get it perfect. Uh, uh, it's, it's about learning and refining over time, which again, really doesn't take that long once you get the hang of this. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. If uh, you have questions, let me know in the comments. And then lastly, uh, again, very, very important, especially in this specific case, negative keywords. So if you're familiar with Amazon PPC, very similar, you can add negative search terms or negative keywords. Same thing here. You can add negative search terms and negative keywords as well. Okay. So, um, once you create your campaign, very important to do, just go over to the left-hand side. So you'll see the keyword section under the keyword section, you'll click and see negative keywords. Go ahead and click on that. Okay. So now you have negative keywords. What are we going to do here? Why are we adding negative keywords? Okay. Remember this is going all the way back to the beginning. That's why I started in the beginning. There's all these different kinds of people on Google. We want to target people who want to buy. So, so there are people typing in, let's just say a uh, stainless steel taco holder. Okay. We want to target those people if we have a taco holder, right? But now think about this. What if someone types in top stainless steel taco holder, what happens there? there now we know based on that keyword, 
or we're very, very confident that that person typing in top um, stainless steel taco holder is looking for information. They're not looking for products, okay? So we don't want the people who are looking for information. We want the people who are looking for products. So, so as you're doing your keyword research with the tools that I mentioned earlier, Uber, Uber Suggest, Google Keyword Planner, your Amazon PPC, et cetera, um, you want to make sure that it, when it and, and I'll include a list. Um, by the way, if you guys want a list of commonly used negative keywords for Amazon products, let me know. If I get enough comments, if I get enough comments and likes on this video, I'm going to give it to you guys uh, completely for free. I haven't made it yet, but it, uh, I'll make it if, if, if I get enough comments and likes. <laughs> How does that sound? It sounds pretty fair to me. So uh, I might just do it anyway. So reviews like, you know, stainless steel taco holder reviews. We don't want to target them again. They're looking for information, not products, uh, top blog, um, you know, uh, uh, all those kind of words. Those are specific words that we want to make sure we include those as negative phrase match. Okay. So, so I take the, I would take the word top. I would, um, put two parentheses around it to make it phrase match. And I would add it as a negative keyword. Cause I want to make sure my ads never show up for any time. Someone uses the word top. I never want to show up because they're likely looking for information, not products. Whenever someone types in the word review or reviews, I don't, I don't ever want to show up for any phrase that contains that uh, keyword and so on. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Um, basically, yeah, we just want to be as refined as possible. And that's another reason why I send it directly to, um, to, to Amazon because I can kind of with Google ads, we can kind of refine that a little bit more. Okay. And then here's a qu couple quick examples. I saw, uh, as my ads were running that people typed in the word Amazon FBA course, Algeria. Now it's available in Algeria, but it maybe people are, are, they want a course or a class in their area in Algeria. Maybe they're, they're interested, like, can I sell from Algeria or selling in Algeria? So it's not specifically relevant. So that's why you can see here, I included the, the country Algeria as a negative phrase match. Here's another example. As you can see the third down accounting, people are typing in Amazon FBA accounting course. Well, it's my course isn't an accounting course, so I don't want to show up for that. So I add that as a negative phrase match. I never want to show up whenever there's a term that has a phrase. I don't want to show up for that because I don't care about them. I only care about people who want to buy, right? Well, I do care about them, but just not, not for this case and so on. You can use this kind of as a reference. Um, so that's kind of at the beginning and you're like, oh, Summer, but what if, what if something slips through? Don't worry. It's if you're bidding at 10 cents a click, you're like you're getting clicks at 10 cents and it's overall very relevant. Um, don't worry. Like it's not, in my opinion, it's not a big deal. Like we can optimize over time. So how do we really optimize? There's a lot of things that you can do. Like you can create, um, two different ads, Google ads and a B test and see which one performs better. Uh, another thing that you can do that I'm going to recommend here, especially after talking about negative keywords. So this section right here, it's, it'll look very similar once you start running ads. Now you can see, um, uh, when what people type that's called search term. Okay. That's what people actually type. And then someone clicks on your ad after typing in that search term. Okay. So in this case, somebody typed in the term Amazon course preview into Google. They saw my ad and they clicked on my ad. I don't really know why they clicked on my ad. I don't really know what this means, but Amazon course preview. I don't really know what that means. It doesn't really seem relevant. So I included the term preview as a negative phrase match. Okay. So every one to two weeks, take literally five minutes or 10 minutes, quickly go through your search term history, which Google will show you right here. And you can take, look at anything that looks irrelevant. Another uh, example could be uh, Amazon. Let's, oh yeah, Amazon Training Courses Ottawa. Again, uh, it's not, my course isn't specifically for Canada, for Ottawa. I'm not in Ottawa. So, so I don't know if that's going to be relevant to them or not. So I want to just be, I, I want to play it safe. So I'm going to take the term Ottawa. And I'm also going to include that as a negative phrase match keyword. Okay. So that's, a, that's one way to optimize. So it's going to, you might start off a little bit bumpy or a little bit rocky, but as time goes on, um, you're going to get more and more refined and really only focus on, and you're also going to find new search terms that you didn't think about before because you're using phrase match. It's going to help you find new search terms, uh, potentially, and you can add those as keywords, right? So you're like, Oh, that's relevant. I didn't think about that. Or I didn't see that in my research or my data. I'm going to add that as a, t as a keyword to target because it's relevant to my product, right? I hope that makes sense. But yeah, uh, that's one way to kind of optimize very important way to optimize your, your, um, uh, as you go on. And, um, and then here's a little bonus for you guys. Okay. Cause I promised a little bonus. Uh, everyone talks about Google ads. Uh, and a lot of people don't talk about Bing ads. Bing still has, it's not nearly as big as Google, but it still has a huge community. And so many people don't talk about it or think about it. Um, here's, what's really awesome about Bing ads. Again, when you sign up for a Bing ad account, you'll get a free, like free advertising credit. For example, spend $25, get a hundred dollars, something like that, right? Or spend $50, get 150. Um, so that's really great. Number two, what's really awesome. 
or number two, what's really great is uh, the cost per click tends to be lower on Bing than Google. So yeah, you may not get it as large of a reach, but you'll, there's still a reach and it's really easy to set up because number three, so number two is the, it's low cost per click. Number three is you, um, it's, it, once you create a, an account, a Bing ads account or a Microsoft advertising account, you can literally with a couple buttons, when you create a new campaign, just, you don't have to recreate anything. You can export campaigns you've already created in Google ads and directly import them into Bing. So that's really, really powerful. So literally it's actually fat, a lot faster, a lot faster, like minutes to set up, uh, literally copy and paste your, your Google ads directly into Bing ads. Uh, and this is going to give you additional exposure, uh, additional, you know, inexpensive exposure, right. And it's something a lot of people don't consider. So it's going to, you know, generally be less competitive. So, um, this is just a little bonus tip for you guys. And there's one last step. If you like the video, please be sure to give me the thumbs up. Comment below with any questions. If you thought you, if you liked the video, let me know. You know, it always helps to kind of get some affirmation. I'm, I am a millennial after all. I need that affirmation. So, uh, so comment, you know, good job. Nice. Liked it. Didn't like it. Anything at all. I'll get back to you. And then also hit the subscribe button. Uh, let's make this thing. I, I want to share this. This is so important. I would love to share this with as many people as possible. Uh, and that's really going to help do that. And, and again, I gave this information for free. If that's something you could do for me. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and I hope you guys found this helpful. Uh, if you did be sure to check out some of my other videos as well. Uh, you guys are the reason that I'm here. I'm so thankful for all of you. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one.